Hi, welcome back. So with this look, I was actually going to the movies and I wanted my makeup to look like it was barely there. So I went for a light natural makeup. Okay, let me show you how I created this look. First, I primed my face with SkinCeuticals CE Ferolic. It's an antioxidant drop. LA Girl Pro BB Cream, a medium. It's a high definition beauty bomb and also Fit Me Foundation for normal to oily skin. As you can see here, I am applying a generous amount of L'Oreal Magic Decrease. It's an eyelid primer. So this will ensure that my eyeshadow lasts long. I'm going to apply to both eyes. And I use my fingers um, just to make sure that it gets into my into that crease and into the eyelid. Another benefit of L'Oreal Magic Decrease is it aids in the actual deposit of color into the eyelid and the eye crease. So as my transition color, I've taken a little peachy color from my MAC Matte Shadow Palette using my Morphe MB17 brush. It's a flat blending brush. And I just kind of want to take it and put it throughout my whole entire eyelid and just under my eyebrow bone. Like I said, this, this offers a good transition color. It's pretty close to my natural skin tone. And as you can see, I love this Morphe S20 brush. I'm going to take a little beige and I'm just gonna apply a little to my brow bone area, pulling from that same MAC Matte Shadow palette. Purpose of depositing a light color underneath your eyebrow is to accentuate and bring light to your arch. I just want to make sure that that's evenly blended because I am going to add another color on top of the first transition color. And if I had to take an educated guess, I'd say this is a greenish brown that I've taken from my MAC Matte Shadow Palette. And I'm using my Morphe S27 brush. It's a blending brush. And I'm just going into circular motions windshield wiper motions to make sure that I've deposited this color into my crease. You see how this is uh, blending out very nicely. It's blending into that transition color that I applied previously. And you want to continue blending until you see no line of demarcation. Be careful when you're pulling shades from your palette to your brush. If you get too much, just dust it off. And I'm doing the same thing here as I did on my right eye. But again, we're going for barely there makeup. This is a good makeup that you can wear to a nine to five job, corporate job, um, to the grocery store, to the movies. Remember less is more. This look is also good if you're doing a family portrait or if you work in the industry and you're taking headshot photos. Um, if you're a person who does not normally wear makeup, you still have to put some type of color onto your eye and onto your face, heavy foundation, so that it will show up on camera. But then again, that's the purpose. We want the makeup to look natural. Silly rabbit. I know this seems redundant, but you never can blend too much. So I always like to go back and double check to make sure everything is evenly distributed. Let me adjust the light here so you guys can see a little bit better. See how I've created a natural texture tone? The idea was to make my crease pop. And for some of you who don't know, the crease is the actual pocket that is right above your eyeball. So now I've taken my Morphe S20, that round crease brush, and I'm deeply defining the crease area with that greenish brown color to both eyes. 
because what you'll see next is that I will take my blending brush and deposit a lighter color onto the ball of my eye. So I'm kind of setting that up. I'm going to grab from my BH Cosmetic second edition palette a peach color. And I'm actually using my MAC 224 brush because I want to blend the peach into the sides of the ball, not only the ball of my eye, but to the sides as well. Hopefully you can see a good natural balance of color and you can see the transition throughout the eyelid. Next, I'm going to dab just a small amount of the L'Oreal Decrease Primer because I want to add a little highlighter. My Morphe S4 brush, I'm just dabbing it on the width of my uh, pupil. Same thing here, we want to stay consistent. And just pat it out until it's evenly blended. Continuing until you've reached your degree of likeness. And moving on, so I wanna take my Morphe eyebrow palette and use a little bit of the medium brown that I used on my eyebrows. And I just want to smudge that underneath my tear duct. You can use eyeliner, but I just chose to use the eyebrow powder. But there's no rules in makeup, so you can Use whatever you want. I'll tell you why I made that choice is I wanted it to be soft. I didn't want any hard lines. I just took the darker brown to put in the corner of my eye. Just to kind of add a little smoke. But again, it's, it's still light. Are you happy? I love this very sexy mascara. I've chosen black, but it seems as though every time I use it, it gives my eyelashes a lot of volume and they always take on the thick appearance. And as you can see, my eyelashes are thin, which is the reason why I wear eyelash extensions. So I'm applying to the lower lash as well, but basically I primed the top lash so that it can adhere to the lash extensions. So my eyelash extensions of choice was the La Charm eyelashes and uh, I chose these because they were super super wispy. I'll give you a tip here. I don't always use tweezers or they have that um, eyelash applicator. Sometimes I just use my fingers. And when I when you use your fingers, you can really if you take the lash and put it towards your eyelid and as you're turning it towards your eyelid, push it down into that crease and then you can go back and secure it. And you may have to go in and pinch um, a little bit to make sure that individual eyelash strip is securely fastened. If you get a little bit of glue in that crease area, if you can pick it off, great. but you can actually apply your eyeliner on top of it and you won't be able to see. I love Milani iTech eyeliner. It's easy to hold. It glides on real smooth and it has a real nice felt tip. And if you watch closely, you can see how this arched applicator allows you to maneuver the eyeliner to make a clean and no mess line. How's that? The glue is dry, I kind of give it a little curve with my finger. So for the lips, I applied Vaseline for moisture. The lip 
pencil that I will be using is MAC Mahogany and the oval toothbrush makeup applicator I actually purchased on Amazon it's Unimix it's a professional soft oval toothbrush makeup set actually it comes with about 18 brushes to a set just outlining my lip with that MAC mahogany I use to make an X here really accentuate the top lip V and if you hug just the outside skin layer you can create a more 3D effect to make your lips look bigger and more plump. And just in case you didn't know, you can actually color the lip with the liner prior to putting the lipstick on. This is um, somewhat like a primer and um, it will help deposit the lip color into your lip and it lasts longer. So what I'm doing here is just blending in a little bit more of that Vaseline. And as you can see, it looks as if I already have lipstick on. So if you don't have lipstick or you don't have the color, you can take your lip pencil and kind of create your own lipstick. Here on top, I've added Anastasia uh, Beverly Hills, which I love. The color is butterscotch. You just want to blot it out. Just doing a little cleaning up here, went outside the edge. Retracing that lip line here since I've added my gloss. Shaney is also a product that you can get on Amazon. Um, I happened to buy a 50 shade eyeshadow kit. This is number 02. And again, I'm using that oval toothbrush makeup applicator. I love to finish my lips with um, the Shaney eyeshadow. It gives it a little shimmer and kind of creates that ombre effect. I use a little bit too much of that Shaney O2, so I'm just going back over with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Butterscotch. I like it. I just want to add a little bit more shimmer. Can you see the difference that it makes close up? Taking a little MAC Pro Concealer to outline my lips just to kind of clean the edge. This makes your lips more plump, the lip line defined, and it makes the lips pop. Using my Morphe angle brush to apply. Using the flat side of my angle brush to smudge out the line and blend it with my foundation. You see that highlight on my cheek? I actually used uh, Maybelline Strobing Stick by Face Studio. It's an illuminator. Also, so that you know off camera, I added underneath my eyes age rewind it's by Maybelline um, it diminishes dark circles and also I'll use this same MAC Pro Conceal and correct underneath my eye it's a um, duo set I use peach and mid yellow and Morphe blush bronzer now those lips are kissable
Thanks for hanging in there. So now that my makeup's finished, I want to use Cinema Secrets Setting Spray. This will ensure that my makeup lasts the day. And I want to fan a little bit so that it will dry. Oh, this feels wonderful. It's a little toasty in here. What is it about fanning yourself makes you feel like a queen? Now I'm ready to go. Let me take these rollers out. Now I rolled my hair up last night, so it doesn't take long. Look at that curl, see that bounce? I purchased these rollers from the Dollar Tree and it comes sets of 10. So I think I used about maybe 20 total rollers, but depending on your length and thickness, you can choose how much, how many rollers you need. This is a great way to protect your hair from the friction while we sleep. Um, once I roll my hair, I usually put a scarf or a bonnet on top. But see, wake up and I'm ready. Stay ready and you got you ain't got to get ready. Get out of there. See, now doesn't it look like I wanted my hair to create these spiral curls? Not only did I save my hair from the heat damage, it saves time. <laughs> it's funny, I used to watch my mom as a kid. I used to watch her roll her hair with these same rollers every night. <laughs> now I know. And being that I'm a full-time mommy, I just don't have time for myself. So I have to learn to multitask. And voila, I have curls for days. And these will never fail you because it's tight. And throughout the day, they'll loosen, but you'll still have curl. Well, thanks so much, you guys, for watching. So basically, that's it. I'm just going to finger my hair until it's fluffy. <laughs> See, you don't even need a comb or a brush. Just your good old fingers will do. Just pull the curls apart while you're caressing your hair. I was going for the 40s pinup curl that the girls used to wear. And she's primping, she's primping. So stay tuned to the next episode of Textures by Tamara. Thank you guys, I really appreciate your support. Bye.